Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Look at that sunrise. There is so much moisture coming off of the hayfield and so much night dew on the ground. So I started out my day, had to come out and check on some things, and I noticed just a little bit of frost. So we had a first light frost. Now, I'm not a super early riser. I'm usually out here by maybe nine, but I can see in the taller grass, like up here by the stack wagon, that there's a good amount of frost there. So that is it for the pollen. The bees are about done. So we've got to wait for all this moisture to dry off for the day before we can start in on tedding and baling hay. So one field has already been tedded and it'll need to dry off before it can be baled later today. I'm sure it should be ready. That was two days ago. That field, we got all cut last night. I took a little bit of hay from the barn to get some piles or stacks used up. And he's got this project going on. So we've had a lot of trouble with this, wanting to kick the third bale over. And the top had been repainted before we bought it. And just from sitting out or having bales on it, some of that paint peeled off. And what was happening is, as he was loading, each bale comes across sideways. This table, they call it, goes up and sets those three here. Now this table's been on alignment, you can see here. There is a yellow kick plate that goes on the top and he actually took that off. He hasn't been able to get that in just right adjustment, but it hasn't affected the rising and coming back down of the table. So I read the manual back and forth and I can't quite figure that out myself. If you have one of these 1034 stack wagons, let me know or if there is another model that's similar. Um, this is the New Holland stack liner stack wagon. And when we have a partial load, we just cover it with a tarp because it's a pain to get up there with a ladder. You've got to set a ladder here or on the back and toss each bale down. This is, I think, one row short of being a full load. So he's got to pick up 15 or 25 bales or so to have this be a full load. But it is really hard on the tarps. These corners where the angle iron all meets, it's ripped that out. I've picked up some more tarp tape so that this can get uncovered today, uh, patched back up for its next use. And what we decided we needed to do is they make a special paint for farm equipment. It will help with the bale sliding across this table. So it's called graphite paint, and I had not used it before. It only comes in black. It was $15 a quart or $35 a gallon at Tractor Supply. Um, they're supposed to have Magic Brand and this other that he picked up called Easy Slide or Easy Glide. Um, I don't know how fast drying it is. I wanted to do a test spot on it as soon as the night dew is dried off of this. So I wanted to come out early and see how wet this is. Get the cows an early start since it's a heyday for us. And the sun is setting earlier too. So I just have to start my day earlier based on the sun um, to get everybody fed. Now he had bought some New Holland yellow to paint this side panel that's plywood. These get replaced over the years. It'll just help it wear a little bit longer. I don't know if that is going to be in the cards to be able to get that done because painting plywood with a brush is just a pain in the butt and I don't have any paint trays to get up there and do it any faster right now. Ugh. The joys of having many projects going on. All my paint supplies are at the workhouse. So again, this will be the last hay cutting for the year, but because it's October, this hay cutting could go on for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we've got weather that changes and I know people think it's crazy, but this morning I was out here, the stars were still out. It was so clear. I have not seen so many stars in our sky in quite some time. There is not a cloud in the sky over here. There is not a... I thought my husband was crazy when he started talking about camping tra trails years ago, and I started looking into it. 
I don't know if you can see it. There's an airplane up there. They are usually lower and white spewing garbage is coming out of the backs of those airplanes. So I think when he gets back, I may make a run to go get some roller covers and some paint trays because to paint this all by brush, it kind of makes the paint go farther. But on the other hand, I can get this whole table painted and finished in time for him to be able to use it. The main trouble that he's had is the two bales here in this section. And I was just looking closely at the table surface. And really, this is just about down to bare metal. It's just real speckled paint. Um, you can see there's a lot of moisture here, but I think if I go ahead and hit this real quick with some steel wool, I was real hesitant to um, take the belt sander to it or even the orbital sander because if I make it real shiny, maybe the paint won't stick at all. Um, a lot of these paints now have primer built into them and I just don't think the rusty metal primer is quite what I want for this application because it's not really rusty, it's just that there's not paint, but it really needs some primer. And the benefit is, is that it's real fast drying. I, I painted a couple of wheels for my father-in-law yesterday. I really think that it helps with the paint a lot if it's thin and since I haven't used this paint at all, I'm kind of up in the air whether to prime it or not. But I don't want to spend that money on the paint and just have it peel off. As you can see, uh, this ha was repainted before we bought it, and we've had it for a few years now. Um, the paint just wears right off, and it goes back down to bare metal again. And when it's like that, you know, the, the bales just kind of stick. Occasionally, he has a little trouble with them wanting to kick up. So maybe this whole shoot will get uh, a coating while I'm at it to help with that. Because you can see here, there's just not much paint left there um, it's smooth enough but definitely uh, the the paint does make a difference I'm gonna go check out what the recommendations are for this and enjoy a cup of coffee while the Sun is doing its job so this is the actual product that we picked up it's called easy slide graphite based coating it's not really a paint so I don't know how it's gonna turn out um, if it's clear or what it is. So I'm going to do a little test spot, I suppose. Um, it looks like they opened it and there's a little drop of black coloring. But what it says is it's a graphite alkali based lubricating paint that bonds quickly to any clean metal, wood, or plastic surfaces. Use on farm equipment, industrial, or home, such as gravity boxes, corn picker heads, beans, bean combines, mowers, truck, and wagon beds, dump bins, solar panel coating, and snow plow blades. The surface to be painted must be clean and dry. Remove all dirt, grease, or loose scaling paint by wire brushing, scraping, or sanding. So, sand all glossy surfaces for better adhesion. Any rusty metal should be cleaned or removed. Use a mineral spirit soaked rag for cleaning and wiping off any dust, or cleaning any areas. Uh, improper adhesion will occur if you have oil or grease. And it will loosen the bond. Use a small paint. Use paint thinner for thinning if necessary. Um, 60 degrees. Okay, allow to dry for 60 minutes at 70 degrees. Proper curing time is 2 hours and 20 minutes. Allow to dry overnight before use. So if he's going to bail today, um, I'll have to ask him because that is saying no. So to have an 8 to 10 hour curing time overnight, I think it might be best to do just a test spot to see how it's working and maybe get the table prepped. I'll have to check with him weather-wise if he's planning on bailing today or tomorrow, whether or not to proceed. Okay, so I've done a little test with my belt sander and it's cleaned up really good. Um, 
I didn't want to get down to the super shiny metal, but I've got a real heavy grit sandpaper on my belt sander. I have had this for years. I had to pick it up when we started refinishing floors to do around the edges. So it was just real good that I had it on hand. I am missing my dust collection bag, but so out here in the open, it's really not dusty at all. So he told me, go ahead, sand what I can, and you can watch. another one. Well, unfortunately, I'm having to try to see if I can do this with a grade three steel wall. I am out of sandpaper. He took the Dodge to work today and there are no more belt sander replacement belts in the shop. So unless I want to take a trip to Menards with my thumb to get a ride, I'm stuck here and I want to get it done. So I'm going to work on it this way. We'll see how it does. It can't do too bad. I'm sure there's probably something around I could use. I use, I found a palm sander, uh, a spare palm sander that somebody had given me a long time ago. But that just was doing so great. And I was hitting these tack welds here, ripped it right open. And I knew just before it happened, I thought, boy, maybe I shouldn't do this. Because in one area over there, it really <sighs> grabbed on. And these aren't super great. Gosh, you know, I haven't, I mean, look, yeah, I was catching it before I even saw it because it spins so fast. That's terrible. I hope that didn't screw that up. But, I mean, this thing has been very, very badly stored. Our shop has so much humidity, condensation and everything. So, I guess. is I've got this driveway project going on and I need to get more gravel and he's bringing the Dodge home for me tonight but that means I lose the time of doing this he said he's not going to bail today so I decided to go ahead with it um, but then I'm losing the curing time it said let it cure overnight uh, and a minimum of Two hours in between coating. Well, two hours and 20 minutes. Hi, buddy. Hi. Anyways, with the big job, like loading up the Dodge with a bunch of gravel, which reminds me, my pointy shovel is the workhouse and I need it for gravel. I'm gonna have to text him to just bring some I'm gonna have to text him to just bring some supplies home. Yeah 
have it. This steel wool is not doing enough to the surface and that belt sander just did such a great job. I'm just going to go ahead and get those sides painted I guess. Up. Yeah, I painted this and these four surfaces. It's called graphite paint. The thing is, I mean, look at that. I don't know about this. It's got a lot of solids at the bottom. Paint. See that? Yeah. That's not supposed to be like that. Wouldn't even leave that on. Well, I think it's going to have to go back. I think somebody already returned it because it has some black dribbles right here. Okay, making a trip back to the store versus going back. All right, so I kept at it for a little bit, and I've been stirring it for about five minutes just while I was talking with the boys about the afternoon's plans. And it's stirring up a lot better than I thought it was going to. I had a primer that was kind of clumpy on the bottom like this the other day, and I knew it was old, so it did not mix in blend up at all. So a little patience paid off, I guess. I've got it mixed up. Hello! Do you have shoes? This guy comes outside without shoes on every single day. Nope. Go back and get your shoes. Yes! It's almost nap time, so mom's going to get this painted and get this guy a nap. walking on it. The kids get down on the lower table for that. It's very metallic like the aluminum paint that I used the other day. Um, and it did say brush on. Just in the time that I was mixing that, the paint was drying on the lid. So I can imagine it's going to dry really well. It says it's a coating, a graphite coating. So, I didn't really know what to expect. As you guys know, we're a huge DIYer. I have solely been managing the rental house renovations for years and have done all kinds of painting. Bathtub paint, countertop paint, epoxies. Um, Yeah, see where I didn't sand that right there, it's not even wanting to stick. Very interesting paint. I mean, it's drying as I'm spreading it. But the surface is, you know, in the sun. I just want to get good coverage now so that maybe I don't have to do a second coat. I'm thinking I can see 
leave like a slight texture to my brush strokes more than like when you do wall paint. So if the bales are sliding across the front to back, I shouldn't get a grain going side to side like I just did the first one. You know, I need some bungee straps. All that time I spent trying to find a belt sander replacement, I want to go back there to get a bungee strap. The smell of this paint is something fierce. It went on really well. There's plenty here. I know the court will do the whole job. I'm just going to see what I can do with the steel wool and just have a little bit of patience. When he gets the third bale on this table, he has to push it down and over at the same time. Like, this is so bare that they're not sliding. So I definitely want to get this surface done for him. And I had mentioned to him, it said any shiny bare metal needed to be uh, prepped and, and roughed up and the steel wool just isn't going to be enough to do that because just the uh, straw and hay alone has shined that up to a shiny metal. So I guess I'm going to just see what we can do. I'm pretty sure that I had painted this yellow once before because I do have the New Holland yellow that we used for the cart that he built when we moved the grain bins a couple of years ago. And I, I really do think that I power washed that and painted that. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. You guys can go get a little snack for a minute. And I'm going to wrap up my paintbrush so it doesn't dry out.
everybody it is getting to be dinner time i took a break for lunch and had to spend some time getting that baby to take his nap i was exhausted from getting up at 5 30 this morning so i'm calling it an early night tonight this got mostly a second coat of paint over the entire tabletop and the shoot i was able to go ahead and do a little bit um, a painting on this bottom lower table. It was kind of hard to do because the paint, the graphite paint doesn't stick very well if you haven't scratched up any surface paint or bare metal. And the sides here were really hard to get. I did actually get out the grinder, which bravo for me. I hate the sound of it. I hate the smell of it. I just vowed to never use it. And I knew I was going to need something more. I really wanted to get this done today and not have to make a trip. Uh, husband had texted me that he was working a little bit later and I really wanted to have this done. So it's likely that we're going to be able to bail tomorrow because it actually got to 68 and 69 degrees today. So quite a bit sunnier and warmer than it had been yesterday. So that hay over in the waterway that he had cut felt pretty good this morning but it feels even better now. So for him, the main thing was getting the table coated with the graphite paint. I really wanted to help him out with this because every time it stops, it's every third bale up here and every first, second, and sometimes third load when the top bottom table goes up. And we had tried everything we could to align this thing for like two years. And last year it was doing it really bad. This year, he just always was taking somebody to the field with him and fortunately we didn't do a whole lot of hay yet so far but we're about to do a bunch and I wanted to have this ready for him so it's a good time to do it we'll get a good test out of it for the rest of this year all of this cutting that we're working on and then if it needs a touch up going into spring next year then we can go ahead and add another coat I really wanted to add a little bit more here where it was so bad for him because it was always these two bales um, one bale, I keep saying these two bales, but. so the first bale comes to about here and the second bale comes to about there. And these two bales here were the ones that were tipping over so much on him. So hopefully this will make a big difference and keep him from having to get off of the tractor and help the rest of the family to not have to follow him around. Normally we have to go through and upright the bale so they'll go through the chute. This will help them go through the chute a little bit better. If it's a sticking problem, if they're tipped over, they still need to be tipped up. But I think this is a good way to go. So that's it on the easy slide paint. I will tell you, if you have bad, rough feet, this is the best stuff in the world. It feels like Teflon on a brand new frying pan. It is so smooth. The areas that got two and even three coats are super slick. My husband had told me he'd been to farms where people had put this in uh, gravity wagons to help grain and ear corn fall out of it easier he said you can't even stand in it and i know it's true we have used ladders to unstack the hay from the front of this before and i know that's never going to happen again because it is way too slick it's like being on black ice or something great great stuff so hopefully it'll hold up well i'll let you know at the end of the hay cutting season how it goes i'll you know post a little update in the comments so thanks for watching everybody. That's it for today and we'll see you next time. Remember to hit that thumbs up button for us. Bye-bye.